this morning, or we thought of how we can be those who end the year in joyful praise and thanksgiving, as we have known something of the loving care and the merciful compassion and the enduring communion of Christ. This evening, as we draw closer to the new year, I'd like us to consider what should be the prayer and the desire of the church. And uh, we read that great and that glorious prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 17. And do keep your finger in that page because we will refer to that prayer. But this evening we're going to turn to the prayer of David and the prayer that is found in Psalm 28. It's on page 378 if you have one of the church Bibles. And uh, the heading in the church Bible is Rejoicing in Answered Prayer. And the psalm closes in verse 9 with a wonderful prayer. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. And I'd like to encourage us this evening to take the form of this prayer as the basis of our prayers for the year ahead. And we find in this prayer in Psalm, at the end of this Psalm, that David is following the example of Christ shouldn't be surprised by this. We started our service by reminding ourselves of that wonderful testimony that's recorded in Acts, where we're told that David, the son of Jesse, was a man after the Lord's own heart. And there is a particular focus in the prayer of David here in Psalm 28, and it's the same focus that is found in Christ's prayer in John 17. And the focus is that both prayers have is on your people, your inheritance. In our earlier reading, we read verse 9, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. We move into 2024 and a new year. What should be the primary focus of the prayers of the church and the body of Christ? It should be those who are Christ's. Now we can all be guilty, can't we, of losing sight of this focus in our prayers. Not that our prayers should not include a desire for peace in the world. Not that our prayers should not include a desire to see relief from suffering in this world. But that we should remember that the primary purpose of the church is the same as Christ's purpose when he came on earth. We read it earlier. I have glorified you on earth, he declared to his Father. That is the primary purpose of the church, to glorify Christ on the earth. And who is it that will glorify Christ? Who is it that will glorify the Father? And who is it that will glorify the Holy Spirit upon this earth? It is only the body of Christ. And therefore it is the body of Christ that should be the focus and the desire above all else in our prayers. You know, if we pray for peace in Ukraine and Israel, and God in his mercy gives it, if we pray for the fall of Islam and communism, 
And God, in his mercy, answers those prayers. Will the world praise him for it? Will you find men queuing up to give him glory? Will you hear the BBC and other media outlets rejoicing in his mercy? Or politicians declaring in Parliament his goodness for prayers that have been answered? No. They will take the glory for themselves. Will answers to such prayers cause the world to cease to hate Christ? and cease to hate his people? No, they won't. Will the answers to such prayers make the world more receptive to his truths and his gospel? No, they won't. While such prayers are an expression of our concern and our love for our fellow man, and whilst the answer to such prayers will bring praise and glory to Christ from his people, they will not bring praise and glory to Christ from the world. So my first point this evening is as we enter 2024, let us follow the example of Christ. Let us follow the example of the man whose heart followed the Lord. And let our focus focus of our prayers be upon those who are Christ. And here in Psalm 28... We are given a short, sharp, brief, pointer to what those prayers should consist of. And the first thing is that our prayers should consist and be focused upon the work of Christ. Save your people. Praise David. In our reading, Christ prayed in verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. The growth and the building of the body of Christ through the spread of his gospel, the conversion of sinners, the saving work of salvation. That's the great work of the Lord Jesus Christ in this world. That's what his gospel is focused upon. That is what he gave his life and shed his blood for to redeem and to save. And as we enter 2024, is there anything that could bring greater glory to Christ than the extension of his kingdom? Is there anything that would give rise to greater rejoicing and greater delight amongst his people, whether here in this place or in any other place across this globe where they meet, than to see their witness for Christ bearing fruit to the glory of his name. To see answers to the prayer that we sang together earlier. May the gospel's joyful sound, enforced by mighty grace, awaken many sinners round to come and fill this place. As we enter a new year, We know that the year ahead will contain its struggles and its difficulties. We know the year ahead in the will of God will give us opportunities to witness. May the primary focus of our prayer be the redemption of lost souls. May Christ save his people. 
There'll be plenty of voices in the world seeking the peace of the Ukraine and Israel. There'll be plenty of voices in the world seeking the temporal relief of distress. But how many voices will be raised before the throne of grace for the most pressing and eternal need of our fellow men if the church itself does not do so? Let us be constant and fervent and earnest in our cries and our pleas before that throne for the greatest and most glorious work this world can ever see, the work of Christ in building his church. There's no greater service we can perform either individually as believers or collectively as a church to our race and to witness to them of the gospel of Christ and to pray that the power of that gospel might be known to them. May 2024 be a year of prayer for the saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ. May 2024 be a year of prayer for the blessings of Christ. Bless your inheritance, David goes on to say. All sorts of blessings we can be praying for in the new year for those who are Christ's inheritance. As we thought this morning we can pray for an ongoing experience of his gracious care, of his merciful compassion and of his personal communion. We can be praying for their spiritual growth and their sanctification. Christ prayed for the blessings of his people there in John 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth, we read in verse 17. In verse 24 he prays, Father I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. 2024, we can be praying for the sanctification through the truth of the body of Christ. We can be praying in 2024 for the blessing of seeing something of his glory. That each and every saint, whether here, or elsewhere, might find themselves growing in his grace and in the knowledge of him. That 2024 might be a year when each of us grow to be more like him. When each of us see something more of his glory. When each of us are prepared further to finally go into his presence. During this last year, I've thought quite a bit on those words of Paul to the Philippians. I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Or as we sang a few moments ago, I need the precious Jesus and hope to see thee soon. Encircled with the rainbow and seated on thy throne. As we come into 2024, is there any greater blessing that any saint of Christ could desire or receive in this year to come than to be readied and to be prepared and to be taken into glory. Whatever the work of service we still have to complete, whatever the cross we still have to bear, 
May 2024 be a year in which we are praying that the Lord would be preparing his people and preparing us to come into his presence. Whether that is through death or upon his return in glory. May 2024, may our prayers for 2024 be a year when we decrease and he increases. You know, there will be many so-called churches gathering tonight and over the next week who will be seeking anything but these things. There will be many congregations who will be told that 2024 is a year when they must pray for health and wealth and happiness in this life. That 2024 is a year when they must seek for Christ to pour out the blessings upon them that the world desires and the world craves. May 2024 not be a year for us when we waste our breath and our energies on such prayers. May we not insult our Saviour and mock his name by seeking the things which are in the world. John tells us quite clearly in his first letter, But all of these things are not of the Father. But they are of the world. And the world is passing. And the lusts of it. Let us resolve at the start of 2024. To be those who are seeking in prayer the blessings of Christ upon his people. Not the so-called blessings of the world. Let us pray in this year to come that we may be those in whom the fruit of the Spirit grows and matures, in whom there is an ever-increasing sensitivity to sin and an ever-increasing desire to bring him honour and to bring him glory. Because truly, these are blessings beyond anything that can be received from the world. May we ask him for them, for ourselves, for those in this fellowship, and for those of his people across the world, in whatever circumstances they find themselves, confident and assured that he has promised to withhold no good thing from us. Following the example of Christ, Let us in 2024 be those engaged in prayer for his work, for his blessings. Let us be those engaged in prayer for his provision. David goes on to ask, shepherd them also. Christ again, he prays in similar fashion in verse 11 of John 17. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one, as we are, the Good Shepherd. He never ceases to provide for his sheep. We read this morning that wonderful description of his people found in Psalm 100, where they're described as the sheep of his pasture. Well, may 2024 be a year when we are engaged in prayer for the provision of his body from his pastures, from his word, and from his spirit. One of the great needs of today is for the word of God to go forth in power for Christ to guide and direct his people. May our prayer for ourselves here in this place and for each and every local fellowship 
that is part of his body. Be what we sang for the year before us. Oh, what rich supplies for the poor and needy. Living streams shall rise. For the sad and sinful shall his grace abound. For the faint and feeble perfect strength be found. May these be the things that we petition the throne of grace for in 2024. The provision of rich supplies and living streams of abounding grace and perfect strength. that we might know that our King and our Lord and our God is with us. Let us have the focus of our prayers upon the Lord of the harvest. We prayed in the prayer meeting for those places that are pastorless, for those places where the labourers are aged and struggling, let us make 2024 the year of prayer that more labourers might be raised up and brought into the harvest. That there would be a raising and a calling of godly men to preach and to lead in the churches. That there might be those faithful wives given who in grace and wisdom supports and encourages them. Let 2024 be for us a year of prayer for the local bodies of the church, of churches to be able to discern the will of Christ in these things. That they might rest upon him and seek him. That they might not be tempted to act upon their own initiative or to act rashly we live in days where everything is expected to happen in an instant where there is no willingness to wait or to seek but the desire and the expectation is that we must act and we must do something and we must be seen to be doing something let us in 2024 be praying that especially in those areas which are the reserved preserve of Christ in the church, that no such rash choices and decisions are made. And I believe that included in these are the call to preach and the call to eldership or pastoral responsibility. Let us be praying that the local bodies of Christ would be provided with men called to these positions of responsibility. Let us be praying that they might be able to discern and to see Christ's provision and to rejoice in it. May 2024 be for us as a church and individuals, a year of prayer where we follow the example of Christ, where we pray for his work, where we pray for his blessing, where we pray for his provision, and finally when we pray for his protection. David closes his prayer and bear them up forever. We live don't we, in days even in this land where we can see the protections of the state being withdrawn, where we can see the liberties that we've enjoyed for so many generations being taken from us, where we can see the attitudes and the views of the world permeating the so-called church. How we need in 2024 the preserving power and the preserving strength of Christ. And it's no surprise, is it, that we find this emphasised by Christ himself in his prayer. There in verse 15 of John 17. 
I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. We sang of that great promise of Christ. I, the Lord, am with thee. Be thou not afraid. I will keep and strengthen. Be thou not dismayed. Yea, I will uphold thee by my own white hand. Thou art called and chosen in my sight to stand. As we come to the start of a new year, and as we progress through it, let us not be afraid to bring before Christ the promises that he's given. Let us plead them for ourselves here. Let us plead them for ourselves individually. Let us plead them for the church in this land, for the church across the world. We regularly pray here for our persecuted brethren in other lands. Let us commit in 2024 to continue to do so. Confident that those prayers are in accordance with his will and mirror the promises he's given. Let us continue to pray for ourselves and for the fellowship here that we would be preserved in our faithfulness that we would maintain and stand firm on the faith that was once delivered to the saints. That the movings of other churches would not be found in here. That those who distorts and perverts the truths of his words would find no audience in this place. But that as we are found in the world, we would be kept, kept from its influence, kept from its practices, kept from its sins, kept from its deceptions, kept from the evil one. Here, in this prayer of David and in the prayer of Christ that we read, we are reminded that the world is indeed a dangerous and a hostile place for believers. They hated Christ and they hate his people. We are to remind ourselves at the start of this new year that we are not able to withstand the wiles of the devil without the protection and the keeping power of our Saviour. We are to remind ourselves that the armour that he has provided must be worn at all times. And as we are told in Ephesians 6 where it is described for us, it is to be worn and used praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, as we move into a new year, 2024, I can assure you will once again be a year of conflict and warfare for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this world. 2024 will again be a year in which the enemy of our souls will seek to assault us and desire to destroy and to deter and to discourage us. Whatever blessings, individually and corporately, we will receive from the hand of our Saviour, and I am confident that we will receive them. There will be growing violence towards us. Our enemy knows that his time is short. And the turn of the year only reduces his time further, increasing his wrath and increasing his desperation. 2024 will not be a year of peace in the world for the church. It will not be a year of peace for us if we stay faithful to the word and the gospel and the person 
of Jesus Christ. Let 2024 be a year of earnest prayer for the protection of his saints, for the protection of the church here as a body, for our faithfulness to him, for our determination and perseverance in standing upon his gospel and upon his truth, that we may not be those who fear to declare the whole counsel of God, that we may not be those who fear to declare sin as sin, that we may not be those who are fearful to declare that there is only one way to reconciliation with God, and it is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. As it seems every week other so-called churches abandon and turn from the scriptures. Let 2024 be a year when we redouble our prayers for his faithful keeping. That we may not, we may be those who do not fear what man can do. But rather have the fear of the Lord in our hearts. Which is the beginning of wisdom. 2024, let us make it a year of prayer following the example of David and the example of Christ himself. Let us be those who are engaged in prayer for the work of Christ, for the blessings of Christ, for the provisions of Christ, and for the protection of Christ. May our prayer echo the words of David. Save your people. And bless your inheritance, shepherd them also, and bear them up forever. Amen.